Hey. I'm Nature's Temper. I told this AI that I haven't used before. I've heard the hype around it. But anyway, I told it to make a creepypasta because that's what I do here on the channel. And it's April 1st, so why not do an extra silly little thing? Recording on my phone because my webcam is absolute dog crap. Anyway, enjoy. Deep in the heart of the city, there stood a grand natural history museum. It was a place of wonder, filled with taxidermy animals from every corner of the globe. The displays were meticulously crafted, with each animal frozen in a moment of graceful repose. But one day something changed. Visitors began to report strange occurrences. They said that the animals seemed to be watching them, their glassy eyes following their every move. Some reported hearing whispers in the air, as if the animals were communicating with each other in some unknown language. As word of the museum's supposed haunted status spread, fear and speculation began to run rampant. Some visitors came to see the taxidermy exhibits, hoping to catch a glimpse of the possessed animals for themselves. Others avoided the museum entirely, unwilling to take the risk. But for those who dared to enter the museum's halls, the experience was chilling. The animals seemed to be alive, their once still bodies coming to life in a macabre dance. They prowled their displays, their movements fluid and graceful as they slinked through the shadows. The museum's staff was at a loss. They dismissed the reports as mere exaggerations, believing that the visitors were simply spooking themselves with their own fears. But as more and more people reported strange occurrences, they knew they had to investigate. The staff began to work together, studying the history of the museum and the ritual that had supposedly summoned the demon. They pored over ancient texts and consulted with the experts in the field, desperate to find a way to banish the demon from their beloved taxidermy exhibits. But the demon was not easily defeated. It had been summoned with great power and intention, and it was not going to be exercised without a fight. One night, as the museum emptied out and the last of the staff left, the demon's power surged. The animals came to life, their movements fluid and graceful as they slinked through the shadows. And then the screams began. The few witnesses who survived that night describe a scene of unimaginable horror. The taxidermy animals had become possessed by the demon, their once beautiful displays twisted into grotesque, blood-soaked scenes of carnage. Visitors were torn apart, their bodies left in tatters as the possessed animals prowled throughout the halls. The museum was never the same after that night. Visitors stayed away, and the staff who survived the demon's rampage refused to return. But the taxidermy animals remained, their demonic possession forever etched into their once beautiful forms. Years passed, and the Natural History Museum became nothing more than a fading memory. The story of the demon that possessed the taxidermy animals were dismissed as nothing more than legend, whispered by those who had been unlucky enough to witness the horror firsthand. But the demon had not banished entirely. It had retreated back into the shadows, waiting for the perfect opportunity to once again take hold of the animals. The opportunity came years later, when the museum was sold to a wealthy collector who had interest in rare taxidermy specimens. He had heard stories of the possessed animals, but he dismissed them as nothing more than the superstitious ramblings of the unenlightened. The collector had the animals brought out of storage and placed on display once again, and at first, it seemed as if nothing had changed. The animals remained still, their glassy eyes watching the visitors as they wandered through the museum. But then the whispers began. At first, they were barely audible, mere whispers in the air that could easily be dismissed as nothing more than a figment of the imagination. But as time went on, the whispers grew louder, their demonic voices echoing throughout the halls of the museum. The collector, unaware of the demon's presence, continued to display the taxidermy animals, ignoring the warning signs of their demonic possession. But as the whispers grew louder and the animals began to move on their own, it became clear that something was terribly wrong. The collector called in experts to examine the animals, but they could find no explanation for their strange behavior. 
They advised the collector to remove the taxidermy exhibits from the museum, warning him of the dangers of keeping them on display. But the collector was determined to keep the animals, convinced that they were a valuable addition to his collection. He refused to listen to the warnings, even as the whispers grew louder and the animals began to lash out at anyone who dared to come near. One night, as the collector was admiring his prized possessions, he heard a voice in his mind. It was the voice of the demon, and it spoke to him in a language he did not understand, but the message was clear. The demon wanted to be released from the taxidermy animals, and it would not stop at anything to achieve this freedom. The collector was terrified, but he knew he had to act quickly if he wanted to save himself and those around him. He called in a team of experts, including a priest who specialized in exorcisms, and together they set to work on banishing the demon from the taxidermy creatures. For days, they worked tirelessly, performing ritual after ritual in an attempt to break the demon's hold on the taxidermy exhibits. And finally, after what felt like an eternity, they succeeded. The demon was banished from the museum, and the taxidermy animals were restored to their once beautiful displays. The whispers stopped, and the animals became silent once again. But the experience had taken its toll on the collector, who never fully recovered from the trauma of the demon's possession. He sold the museum soon after, unable to bear the thought of being near the taxidermy animals ever again. The new owners of the museum were more cautious, aware of the history of the exhibits and the dangers of their possession. They kept the animals on display, but only after performing their own exorcisms to ensure that the demon was truly gone. And for years, the museum remained peaceful and uneventful, a place of wonder and education for all who visited. But in the dark corners of the museum, where the shadows lingered and the taxidermy animals stood watch, there was a feeling of unease. It was as if the demon's presence still lingered, waiting for another chance to take hold of the exhibits and wreak havoc once again. And so, the taxidermy animals remained, silent guardians of the museum, their demonic possession forever etched into their once beautiful forms. And though the museum remained open, and visitors continued to flock to its halls, there was always a sense of danger lurking just beneath the surface. As the new owners of the museum took over, they thought that the worst was behind them. However, they soon realized that the demon that had possessed the taxidermy was not simply a malevolent spirit, but a powerful eldritch monstrosity that had been summoned from another dimension. The new owners, determined to rid the museum of this creature once and for all, sought out a group of experts in the field of native British magic. These experts had knowledge of ancient spells and rituals that had been passed down through generations, and they were the only ones who could hope to defeat this creature. The group of experts worked tirelessly to prepare for the battle with the demon. They gathered rare herbs and ingredients, drew protective wards, and imbued weapons with magical energy. And when the night finally came, they were ready. The demon appeared before them, a towering mass of writhing tentacles and black, oily ichor. It let out an ear-splitting shriek and the battle began. The experts fought with all their might, their spells and weapons striking true against the demon's hide, but the creature was powerful, and it fought back with a ferocity that left them reeling. For hours, the battle raged on, the experts slowly gaining ground against the demon, and finally, with a final burst of energy, they struck the killing blow. The demon let out a final mournful howl, and its body began to disintegrate into ash. The experts watched in awe as the ash was carried away on a gust of wind, disappearing out the window and into the night sky. The demon was finally defeated. The museum was free of its curse. The taxidermy animals remained still and lifeless, their glassy eyes no longer filled with demonic energy. And the visitors once again flocked to the museum eager to see the wonders of the natural world preserved in its halls. But the experts knew that they could never let their guard down, 
They knew that this demon was not the only eldritch monstrosity that could be summoned from another dimension, and that they must always be ready to defend against any such threat that might arise in the future. So that was actually not as bad as I was expecting. Uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. Can probably do something like this in the future because it's kind of fun. I tried with other prompts. This one is most successful. Have a good day. Mwah.